Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Propaganda Cast Addendum with me, your host, Imperial Dane. Off here to another What's Wrong With This Faction episode, since apparently the one in the Wehrmacht was quite popular and people want more, so of course I shall deliver. As your gracious host, Lord and Master, God Emperor, whatever sort of respectful title you want to give to me. So, off we go here. The Orbit Commander Best, certainly the other sort of Axis faction with a lot more troubles in its past. In many ways, a more fresh faction there, at the same time carrying over some of the legacy of feel of the Panzer Elite, but overall, a faction that has never sort of truly felt at ease, a faction that to an extent always felt rather confused as to what he wanted to do. Designed as an aggressive faction, yet bearing many of the hallmarks of a late game defensive faction, lacking a lot of the elements for aggressive play, and overall just never quite knowing what he wanted to do. Its initial design was sort of very much based around trucks, only being able to gain resources from them. Full Scandinavians were relegated to the Battle Group headquarters, and you didn't even access the Panzer IVs. That was later, in fact, many cases the Oberkommandos has been reiterated. I mean, I didn't even bother touching the Oberkommandos for more or less a year, because it was just an absolute shambles when it was first released. It was just sort of a mess. They, in many ways, it reminded me a bit of the Panzer Elite, but without any of the things that made the Panzer Elite work. It sort of took all of the worst flaws of the Panzer Elite, magnified them, and then took all the things that make the Panzer Elite work away. And of course the question is, how did it come to that? I mean, over my personal theory is basically when they designed the Upper Commander Vest, they accidentally just began looking at all the big toys first, you know, Tigers, King Tigers, Storm Tigers, Infrared half and you know, all the sort of the cool gadgets and then they sort of realized uh, how do we make a faction work around that and they just sort of got stuck and it just sort of became this mess because I mean for a faction that lacks a lot of the key components for able to work as an aggressive faction it doesn't have a lot of the you know core components that to actually add them in like machine guns for example and only like now here around December we're finally gonna get smoke the faction connect use which you know one of the more critical components of companies too yet for, in particular for an aggressive faction, yet it was never really added except in a version that a harmed its own infantry, which is just a bit counterproductive. I mean, the Oberkommand rest in that sense has always been confused. Supposed to look like, you know, the Ardennes fat, sort of assault German army, you know, last hurrah, all that, but it just never had it in it because that was, you know, faction uh, army with, you know, spearheads with a lot of mechanized troops, armor. Big tanks, obviously, but also just a lot of assault rounds and the likes. It just sort of never came off as that because it never had the mechanization. It didn't have motorization. It had the Kubelwagen, and that was it. So, why well, in some ways, and they had to nerf the Sturm Pine as well because they proved too powerful too quickly. So now they're sort of by way in a weird spot where, like, they're kind of good, but they're not really good either because that range of damage drops off too quickly and they take too long to veterans up so they can quickly be you know counted and most people just go for the full scan ideas who are now actually to an extent overperforming because again overall they just never found the footing for the Oba Commander Vest again it's supposed to be an aggressive faction but a lot of the mechanics just don't need to it again like level 5 veterans trucks to keep a position close to the front line including a battle group headquarters larger to heal and reinforce like that's you know the Brits like these mixed Brits mechanics into an aggressive faction like the Brits back in companies when we were talking those kind of Brits were you know the antithesis of aggressive in a sense like I mean they have bulletproof to adjust it up but still in a sense they were not you know the aggressive faction yet those are the sort of mechanics they mixed into the Oba Commander Vest so as it sort of becomes more and more clear the Oba Commander Vest is just this sort of confused mess it has some good components but like there's just so many confused components as well that just sort of do not interact with each other and what could have been there you know wasn't there I mean you know they took all the wrong bits would say for the pants elite rather than say you know the half tech plan you know great mechanized infantry you know with some flexibility through there allowing you to rapidly move about outmaneuvering your opponent instead of, you know just this faction which relies on infantry blobs and that's about it which again is a bit weird and again all these really really big unwieldy tanks and tank destroyers but nothing of the meat and potatoes not even the smaller cooler things and certainly no real tactical flexibility either so again you're increasingly forced to rely on just on raw power to get anywhere in fact you get punished if you don't go for a lot of full scanities 
in many matchups. Like you can't experiment with the overcome unless you will get punished because then you can just get counter cheesed and destroyed. So in that regard, the Obercommand Vest is just... I mean, it's not, say, as bad off as Valmet. It's still one of the most plays, but again, you have a very limited sort of room within it. You can actually sort of play the Obercommand Vest. That's kind of the problem. Like, you can't explore Sturm Pioneers because they're kind of good for like a minute or two, and then they sort of rapidly drop off in utility. Orbs of Darden take too long and are too expensive. They can be sort of good, but at the same time, they're nerf so much as well. Kind of like the Panther, that they're sort of good, but at the same time, they're not really good. In fact, I've seen some argue they actually do less damage than Ripen with BARs, even with the Light Machine Gun upgrade, which is supposed to might be something too. So, there are a lot of things that are sort of, you know, lacking, a bit confused there with the Orbital Commando Vest. And overall, it's got, I mean... Idea of another great overhaul, I think, is just basically long gone. I mean, they tried, it didn't work out. So, I mean, what can you do with the Orbital Command Vest to sort of kind of make it, you know, less, well, you know, confused? Sort of streamline these, you know, as much as you can, so at least make it work towards an aggressive faction. I mean, overall, my first idea would basically just look at the Sturm Pioneers, replace the assault rifles with MP40s, then create a separate upgrade called the Assault Kit, which upgrades them, then with the assault rifles. The MP4 was sort of kinda good. Bit lower range than the current one, but a bit more damage up close. The assault rifles then were still more on the line with Panzer gun of the assault rifles. At least they'll be better assault rifles. And then with that upgrade, you then also give them access to smoke grenades and sort of maybe regular grenades. That way you know the Sturm Party is all of a sudden have a bit more modality. They're not, you know, you know, something that can just be easily spam well you can't extend them, but then there'll be much more clearer weaknesses to them. But then at the same time you then have an option to make them even better if you actually want to focus your strategy on them. That way you also have like the Panzer Shake upgrade, Minesweep upgrade, but then also the Assault Rifle upgrade. In fact, that regard, they'll all of a sudden be a bit more closer to the Panzer Grenadiers of the Panzer Elite, which, you know, sort of had this modality in them as well. So with that, you sort of, you know, make the Sturm Pioneers much more a core unit, much more of a flexible core unit, and maybe you'd give them some kind of ability with their Panzer Shake Bravo, and maybe allow them to lay down Telemines, maybe. But that way, again, they'd sort of be more flexible, capable, and you know, you sort of have a bit clear idea of where they stand as a unit. Whereas again, kind of they're sort of like, kind of good for a minute, but then they become bad. Then they might become good if you somehow manage to keep them alive for like half an hour, at which point they hit Veterans 3. Like, the Veterans is really one of the things that just bugs me the most because they require so much more than any other unit. Like, they could bloody well storm Moscow and they'd only get to Veterans 2. I mean, maybe Veterans are free if they can, like, punch Stalin on the nose. So, there's definitely, I think, uh, room for some work there. Similarly with the Fulkers, I'd definitely suggest nerfing them, sort of, you know, for a couple of ones to make the Sturm Pass more useful, that'd be sort of, of course, better. Nerfing the Fulk's gonna do a bit, you know, hit the received action modifiers, again, the sort of whole bulletproof in basic infig It's the one thing I really do not like, and that's sort of the problem with the Fulk's, because they sort of become, to an extent, Bulletproof with the veteran team, which is the one thing again I obviously know too. And then sort of when you hit towards that, I mean you can sort of you know, begin maybe considering doing some other things with them. But then again, I think you know this should just sort of be basic infantry. The student parts again sort of the more flexible, you know, elite combat unit. But again, once we're there again, you can sort of just nerf the full scanners again. They'll be sort of in you know, a mass unit, but you know they won't be busted. Then we can sort of move on to other stuff like you know making the bad group headquarters a little more useful and less cheesy. I mean. That thing is just, you know, again, one of those messes, you know, track that is really difficult to destroy. I mean, they're sort of trying to nerf it now by, you know, increasing reinforcement costs while it's set up. And I suppose that's one way of doing it. But honestly, at this point, I'd just say, you know, just lock all the trucks into the base. Just no more. Just don't have trucks that are basically fortresses out on the battlefield. Like, it's just been proven a bad idea in companies, one with the Brits. And it didn't become better with the Orbital Commander Vest and Companies too. I mean, just bite the bullet, accept it's a lost cause, and just, you know, do it. Or, I mean, my own personal favorite would just be remove the reinforceability in the first place and add a 250 on half check to the Orbital Commander Vest. Just give them a half check, give them some of that, you know, speed, elan, you know, that Blitzkrieg sense, you know, to that, that last dash, and you know, maybe allow them to fire out of the vehicle. That way you can also do a bit more of the Sturm Punish. Just something there, so, you know. There's a bit more going on. And again, so it's not just all centered around the bad group headquarters, it then only gets like, you know, more consistent healing and other bits. Similarly with it, but again, 
one reason I just want to log it in is then like you just don't get to set the square points of quarters up and sort of in you know, the places that are really annoying. It's hard oh, that'll make it a bit easier to destroy by some things. But just doing that I think could also do a lot, you know, for the upper commanders. Nerf the looks up obviously again it's just too efficient for a light tank at the moment. Puma's fine, strict as a fuzz is just just remove that creeping barrage and just give it a regular barrage. I mean, it actually make it better. I mean, kind of the problem with the Stukas of Fuzz, it's actually a terrible unit. Like, the only way it becomes good is if the opponent somehow manages to line up his units up perfectly. Like, he'd have to actually work towards making it good. That's like the problem with the Stukas of Fuzz. It's actually a load of crap. I mean, most of the times I've never seen one go for it. Like, 9 Ks out of 10, it's a complete joke. So just remove the creeping barrage. I don't know why they give a creeping barrage. I mean, rockets were not known for their great accuracy. They were known for being barrage weapons. You just saturated an air with rockets, and for some reason it became this sort of weird, accurate, yet not actually accurate at all weapon. It's just really weird. I mean, again, you don't do creeping barrages with rockets. You do saturation bombardments with rockets. You fucking, you know, murder them. Blast the air, the lungs, which is, by the way, what the new weapon was good at. Just creating these huge pressure pockets, just killing people with that instead of necessarily explosions. So it would also be a no good move, and they're also nothing the Panther now for the Obo Commander Vest, but you know, I think in this regard again, just do what we're doing with the, should do with the Vermont Panther, just give it some abilities, you know, make it elite before you nerf it for being apparently too elite, you know, give it some abilities, you know, give it some stuff, the same with the Obo Commander Vest Panther 4, give it some abilities, like, again, the gems supposed to be these elite forces, yet, I mean, they just don't have the abilities to reflect that. I mean, give the Orbital Commander's Panther, you know, some veteran abilities. Let them shine a bit, you know. Give them some neat things to do. They're supposed to be into this super aggressive faction. You know, give them some Blitzkrieg, some boom. The allows you just, you know, do something really nasty. I mean, like maybe a tank truck ability for the Orbital Commander's 4, you know. Makes it move slightly faster and inf makes the machine guns just suppress infantry, for example. But, you know, might make it, you know, a bit easier to hit or s make its main gun slow, fire a bit slower. Panther, you know, could, uh, I don't know, get a spearhead mode, you know, which shoots, you know, for a bit further away or something like that. Or might even get an ability where it can shoot faster but doesn't then see us or can shoot as far. You know, more of a brawler ability. I mean, there's options there. Options. But I just feel like, you know, again, there's just this weird situation where, again, they just keep nerfing it instead of just going, well, why don't we just give them some abilities and modify them through that, you know? That could also work out. Might also give people an incentive for not spamming them and, you know, trying to manage them more carefully. I'd also do something about the Orbital Dad, just give them more abilities as well, you know, again, they just sort of kept removing all its veterans you know, until the point where it's just, you know, they're sort of good, but they're not that good either. So again, my suggestion would be just Give them some abilities, you know, give them some, you know, better smoke grenades than the blend cover, which is just kind of rubbish. I mean, give them some other abilities. Something that allows them to, again, stand out a bit more compared to all the other allied infantry. In that sense, I mean, we can, you know, consider options. Maybe a sort of hit the dirt ability, or just maybe, like, you know... They can throw grenades automatically at veterans. Five tanks can do it. Why can't the infantry again? This super elite infantry. I mean, that'll make them maybe a bit interesting. Though, of course, it would be rather busted when you consider it. But you know, just consider a bit more abilities for the commerce, But you know, have them sort of with more trade-offs. You know, compared to the vampire, but more stable again. This sort of more reckless over sellers attacks. You know, give them abilities. You know that you know they can do more damage, but they also take more damage. You know. That kind of stuff, like inspired assault from, you know, the Wehrmacht's terror doctrine there back in Companies 1. Sort of abilities that reflect that, you know, again, they'll push themselves harder, but they'll take a really good beating then if you're not careful. I mean, that could, you know, further emphasize then the aggressive style of the Oberkommando Vest rather than the current one, which is, you know, well, we're an aggressive faction, but we'd rather just prefer sitting back until we hit Veteran 5, which again is sort of, you know, most of the time. So, I mean, to sum it up, a really confused faction, which has been from since the start, still kind of confused, but, you know, probably not have the resource to fix it all up, but again, I suggest looking into abilities, buffing some units, changing some up, getting some upgrades here and there, again, Sturm Pioneer is really need looking at, Fulkers need to be slightly nerfed, and, you know, look at giving the armor some veteran abilities, also the Yak Panzer, give that something, maybe some high explosive rounds, that could do quite nicely. 
So there you go, sort of my thoughts on the Oba Commander Vest. Probably a rather long rant here, but it's also, in many states, just a really, really complicated faction. Compared to the Valiant of Amor, you just sort of easily pointed out, you know, the late game sucks. It's a faction, again, that's 12 years old. Never really got what it needed. With the Oba Commander Vest, it's just sort of, well, where do you even begin? It's just here and there. Yet, not even there. So it sort of becomes a lot harder to pinpoint, and you just sort of... My suggestions are just more like, you know, trying to glue it all together so it sort of resembles Le Grill, and then just hope it's, you know, actually a Le Grill. So there you go. Hope this video satisfies you. We've certainly been dissatisfied with the Oba Commander Vest like me, because I want to like the faction, but it's just not really got much going for it in many ways. So if you didn't know, subscribe, like, share, comment on it. If you like what I do, donate, pledge and Patreon, all that. And of course, a big thanks to all my Patreon supporters, without which this episode would not have been possible. So thank you all, and see you all for another video. Cheers.